Hello, welcome back. We are on video 27 now, book of Genesis. We started with video 13 on the book of Genesis and we're in 27, so what is that? That's uh, what, 13, 13, 14. This will be the 14th video we've done on on, uh, on Genesis. And if uh, I'm gonna ask the Lord for, for a word of wisdom, you know, sometimes I forget to do that. And, uh, and, and you know, wisdom was with the God before he even made the world, wisdom was with him. So it's always good to have wisdom. And the only the true wisdom comes from the Lord. So I always ask the Lord for wisdom. So Lord, thank you for the wisdom. In the precious name of Yeshua, the Messiah. Okay? Amen. Amen. So if you were with me on the last, I'm going to just recap a little bit. We were on, on Genesis, uh, started on, on the 18th verse of chapter 9 and went through chapter 10 all the way to the 10th verse. And we spoke about what happened with uh, Noah and Ham, his youngest son. Uh, and then we went on to the generations of Noah's sons. Now, Noah had lived after the flood 350 years and he died. So we have been there 350 years. And now we've got the generations of his sons. And there's probably another 40, 50 years here. So we're somewhere there at 400 years uh, after the flood. And we come to a guy named Nimrod. And Nimrod was the first man that Satan tried to use to stop God's plan. Okay. Uh, I read through, uh, through the, uh, what do you call it? The, 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 the appendix, Appendix 28, who this guy was and what his, his plan was to try to get you to stop believing in God and to believe in him and to trust him. That was his whole deal. And he, uh, started the Tower of Babel. I don't know if you've ever heard the Tower of Babel. And Babel means confusion. But nevertheless, we're there out of that. Uh, we were on verse 10, where it says that the beginning of Nimrod's kingdom was Babel, and Eric, and Akkad, and Kelnet, and the land of Shinar. Okay, so this guy is trying real hard for you to accept him as the king. And I'm assuming back in those days, the way things were, if you didn't accept him as a king, you'd probably chop your head off. That's the way things were back then. Uh, and if you did catch the last uh, video, you saw what I talked about him and his mom and uh, the statues of, of a lady carrying a baby. Uh, that was her. Nimrod's mom with Nimrod when he was little. That's where that came from. It came from from the 10th chapter of, of Genesis. It didn't start here recently. Those statues have been around since the flood, after the flood, right after the flood. Okay, so now we're going to go to verse 11 out of chapter 10. It says, Out of that land went forth Asher and built it Nineveh and the city of Rehoboth and Caleb. Nineveh, uh, who was his name? Jonah. Jonah was the one who got eaten by a whale or by a fish, but he was from the city of Nineveh. So we see how the world has populated. It's beginning to, I mean, it, it's, it's flourishing. It's, it's all over the place. Noah's three sons, their sons, their grandsons, their granddaughters, uh, the, the, the people that, that Noah brought with him in the ark, uh, the races that he brought with him in the ark, it, we're getting a bunch of people, you know, 40, 50, 60 years down the road. There's maybe a thousand people. I don't know exactly how many, but it doesn't take long when you have this reproduction, especially back in those days when people started reproducing around the age of 13. Okay? So... 
Verse 12, it says, And reason between Nineveh and Cala, and the same is a great city in Mizraim, began, began Ludum and Anim and Nahabim and Neptuhim, and Pethrusim and Kesulahim, out of whom came Philistim and kept Torim. And Canaan begat Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Girgashite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, and the Arvite, and the Semarite, and the Hamathrite, and afterward were the families of the Canaan spread aboard, Canaanites. Canaan, out of Canaan came all of these tribes, and, and once in the New Testament, no, excuse me, still in the Old Testament, when, when they come, when, when the Hebrews leave uh, the, the wilderness and they're coming to the Promised Land, all of these people control the Promised Land. So it shows you where that son of Noah settled and, and how Nimrod accomplished what he had set out to do. Got people to turn away from God. Uh, and that's what you see here, because when when the Israelites were crossing over the Jordan to go into the Promised Land, they sent out spies, and the spies saw, they said, there's, there's giants in this land. We're scared. We don't want to go over there. We, we can't take them. Uh, but Joshua said, yes, we can. And they went and, and took them anyway. But all of these that I just named were in that land, in the Promised Land. And God had given that land to the Israelites, you know, and, and, uh, you know, God gives and God takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's what Job said. But just because God gives you something like he says, I'm going to give you uh, this land when he told Abraham to get out of the earth, the Chaldees and go where he was going to be. He says, I'm going to give you this land that's flowing with milk and honey. It's in the Jerusalem area. And even though God gave them the land, they still had to fight for it. Okay? And uh, I'm just going to give you a little story. When, when This place that I, that I have here, my home here in, in, in Mission, Texas. Uh, uh, bought this place in 1986. I, I, when, when I became a Christian in 82, uh, I prayed for four years that the Lord would give me a place where I could work out of, uh, you know, have a cabinet shop. And, and and have my house at the same time. And, and I, I was able to buy this place and it was it was God that opened the door for it. Okay. And and I can say with all my heart that God gave us this home to live in. But during the time of this progress when my kids were little growing up, uh, my wife didn't work. I was the only one that worked. And I, my normal days were 16 hour days because I had four kids, my wife, and to feed four kids. Nevertheless, there's at least six or seven times that I can recall that I almost lost this place because I would get behind on my payments simply because I, I you know, self-employed. Sometimes we had work, sometimes we didn't. But I look at it now 40 years later and I see how God was here in the good times and the bad. And he gave us this place. I can, I can genuinely, honestly say that God gave us this place. Did I pay for it? Yes. Made the monthly payments. It's been paid off for a time. But just because God gives you something doesn't mean that you don't have to go back and work for it to keep it. And that's exactly what, what they would have to do here, the Israelites. They would promise the promised land, but they had to fight for it. So now we see that they're... Uh, the, 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 the Canaanites, we're going to verse 19, and the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar, unto Gaza, as thou goest unto Sodom and Gomorrah, and Admon and Sebulim, even unto Lesha. Now, we've all heard of Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, so now we know where it is, we're at. These are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. These were Ham's kids. Okay. And a lot of these kids, I mean, you saw what Ham did in, in the prior 
actually two two videos back. Uh, so him and his kids, his grandkids, his great grandkids, his down, what do you call it, uh, generations, they would become the enemy of the Israelites when they were going into the promised land. And it started with him. Okay, and if, if you want to see what he did, go back to videos and you'll see what he did. Okay, so now we go to Shem's. It was, uh, it was Japheth, Shem, and Ham. Now we go to Shem's downline. And unto Shem also the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder, even to him were children born. And the children of Shem, Elam, Asher, and Arphax, and Lud, Aram, and the children of Aram, now his grandson, Uz, Kuei, and Gether, and Mash, and Arphax begat Salah, and Salah begat Eber, and unto Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. And Joktan began Almodad, and Shelef, and Harris, Hazaramath, <laughs> and Jerah, and Handaram, and Uzai, and Dikla, and Obal, and Abimimel, Sheba, and Norfit, Hapala, and Jobab. And all of these were sons of Joktim. And their dwelling was from Misha, as thou goest unto Sephir, a mount of the east. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, after their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Okay. It says, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So, this is where the Tower of Babel comes into place. They made the city, and they began construction of the temple of Babel, the Tower of Babel, okay? And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men build it. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and therefore confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. God comes down and makes one language into seven so they couldn't understand each other anymore. So they had to stop building the city and the tower. They couldn't communicate with each other anymore. Okay? And, and you need to understand a lot of times that happens to us here in the natural when you're doing something that's against God and the Lord doesn't bless it and stops it. It stops it completely. And you have to go another route. That's what these people were doing. The problem is now they had to find people that spoke the same language that they did. Okay? So therefore, this is the same, verse 9, therefore this is a, the name it called Babel because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad from all the face of the earth. So Babel, we talked about Babel over here in, in chapter 10. Uh, means confusion. Later on it becomes Babylon. And Babylon is confusion. And confusion is what is ruling the world right now. All over the world, we're in a confused state because nothing is happening the way that our leaders are trying to make it go. Okay? Babylon is here. Babylon the harlot, the mother of harlots. We'll go into that another time for another another lecture. But this is where it started with the Tower of Babel. 
confused, confused state. You know, I'll see people that say, it's, I'm, you know, I'll say something that, that comes out of the, of, the, of the word that they have no clue of. And they'll say, well, I'm confused and God is not the author of confusion. And that's true. God is not the author of confusion. But when you've never heard the truth, you know, I'm a grandpa, great grandpa. I've got one great grandson. But I'm not exempt from making a mistake and telling my kids or my grandkids or even my great grandson something that's wrong. But I've people that have that I have that I have dealt with. They say, "Well, my grandparent or my grandpa or my grandmother, they couldn't have been wrong." I say, "Well, if they never got in the word, there's a strong possibility that they could be very wrong." But now you're hearing it, you're seeing it, and you're reading it. It's not me saying what's in here. I'm just reading what's in here. So, yes, God is not the author of confusion, or a God of confusion. Amen. Babylon is. Yes. So if you're confused, it stands to reason that Babylon has become your God. Okay? When you hear the truth, Jesus said, the truth will set you free. Seek the truth at all times. His name is Jesus, the Lord Yeshua. Okay? Now, it says in verse 8 of chapter 11, it says, So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore, as the name is of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So God comes down to check them out. They're building a city and building a tower to reach him. Okay? How? You know, there's skyscrapers here in the world today that are extremely tall. And they don't come close to reaching God. And then there's one roof dwellings, one story dwellings where people reach God simply because they have gotten into the Word. If you want to reach God, you know, I, I, I've said this, if, if you're tuning in for the first time here and listening to me speak, if you're not a Christian and people say, well, I belong to this church and I belong to that church and it doesn't matter what church you belong to. If you're not a Christian, then you need to become a Christian. And people also can, can you know, uh, tell me that you need to go through all this prayer to ask God. Uh, and you know what? When I became a Christian, all I did, I said, Lord, please come into my heart. And I meant it with all my heart, and he did. So today they tell you, well, you got to say, Lord, I know that you're this and you're that and this and that. And please come into my heart. And if you come into my heart, I'm going to do this and that. No. If you're not a Christian, all you got to do is ask the Lord. If you're serious, if you're not serious, you won't do it. But if you're serious, let's ask Jesus to come into your heart. And he will. Okay, you know, I'm going to leave you all with that right now. I feel that it's, it's a good stopping point here. Uh, become a Christian. Ask Jesus to come into your heart. That's all it takes if you're serious. Okay? Thank you so much for listening. Take care. We'll see you the next time. Lord bless. I love you all.